Hello, and welcome back to my small part of the universe. My name is Hailstone. Today, we'll be discussing the Spineling's new cousin, a rather toxic little creature called the Viperling. So please, if you will, sit back, relax, and let us begin. Much like the emergence of the new mantis, there is also a new species that has arisen from the deeper waters, the Viperling. Many call it a subspecies of the Spineling, and perhaps that is true of some ancestor of the two species. But with this Viperling, I am willing to contend that just from its head and body plan alone, this creature makes up more than just its own species. It represents a radically different type of Spineling in terms of grouping, weaponry, and metabolic processes. But perhaps I am getting a little too ahead of myself here. Biology of the Viperling. The Viperling is an odd creature, even when compared to its cousin, the Spineling. In terms of just a general body plan, the Viperling can be called near identical in that case, but there's also a number of vast differences between the two. Unlike the ribbed, chitinous plate of both the giant Spineling and its smaller brethren, the Viperling is honestly something almost more akin with old earth serpentine creatures, something that also goes for the coloration of the Viperling, being seemingly covered in an array of layers scales stained with hues of green in both sickly and dark variations. These scales make the Viperling a hair bit more durable than a typical Spineling, though not by a large degree. The reason that they have these scales may be due to a recent mutation. Considering how the larger a Spineling gets, the unhealthier the creature begins to look, perhaps this is a way to somehow adapt to that. Perhaps to counteract a new virus or toxin that is affecting the species, or perhaps even a parasite. In addition to being slightly tougher than the standard Spineling, the Viperlings are also a fair bit thinner, with the lower part of the body being composed of three large bulbs that are followed by a rounded pill-like tail. Though, strangely, this thinner body type doesn't seem to make the Viperling any faster than a regular Spineling. The middle body of the Viperling is slightly more slender than that of its cousin, and the spines attached to it are a sickly green color. And it is one of the features that truly makes the Viperling different from the Spineling, as its spines are laced with trace amounts of a toxic chemical known as Morbuzine, a toxic chemical that can cause a total shutdown of the human body in a matter of minutes. The final aspect of the Viperling's body is its odd head, vastly different in comparison to that of the Spineling. Rather than an opaque dome, the Viperling's head is much more like that of an insect, honestly making me think of something more similar to a dragonfly larva, with seemingly two large eyes sticking out of the sides, covered by a thick layer of scales, and to top off the creature, a odd mouth that seems to sport some form of small array of whiskers or feelers. Diet of the Viperling. Like I said earlier, the metabolism of the Viperling is one that is probably powered by a chemosynthetic process that is conducted by bacteria in its gut. But what would the creature eat that would allow it to create Morbuzine as a byproduct? And this is actually among the easiest answers I think I have ever come across during my time here in these seas. As here in the hydrothermal wastes, Tectonic energy is constantly renewing the landscape, breaking apart large mounds of stone and crushing all sorts of small-shelled creatures that call these cliffs home, for the broken rock and nutrients then to be released and be funneled upwards into the Great Sea to feed the rest of Europa. These renewed landscapes also release something else when they break apart, and they are compounds that are very valuable to the Viperling and any traitor to a certain crew trying to kill their captain or an annoying clown. Hyd Droxophate, polyhalite, argonite, and most importantly, pyromorphite. Now, what do these minerals have in common for the Viperling? Well, for the leading three, they all have calcium in their concentrations, or are completely made out of said element. In the case of argonite and pyromite, these contain chlorine, and once you add some sulfuric acid in there, but some good old morbuzine. Based on this, I would suspect that the Viperling's diet consists of finding calcium and chlorine-rich rocks to effectively chow down on, possibly using the small feelers on the head of the creature to sense or feel around for the right chemical signal before using its small mouth to latch onto a juicy rock and secrete sulfuric acid onto the minerals in an attempt to break it down and suck out the calcium and chlorine that it seeks within. Though, that would beg the question, where would the Viperling get these sulfuric compounds? 
Worlds, and thankfully, that is also an easy answer. As many here on Europa know, the floor of the Abyss is one that is cracked, holding many hydrothermal vents on its floor, emitting a variety of rich gases, and if they are anything like the ones here on Earth, they may also emit hydrogen sulfide, which, owing to the slightly tougher nature of the Viperling, may allow the creature to quickly dart down into the deep abyss and spend some time gathering up the needed sulfur-like compounds before retreating, lest they attract the attention of something bigger. Speaking on the use of Morbuzine by Viperlings, I currently believe this to be more accidental than anything else, with the poison simply being excreted onto the spike as a way to get rid of excess poison that was simply produced as a part of the chemosynthetic digestion process. Is the Viperling a new species or not? This is rather hard to answer, as I initially thought that the Viperlings tended to their own groups rather than convorting with spineling herds, but in the hydrothermal wastes, I have been proven rather wrong in this notion, as Viperlings can be commonly found in large groups of spinelings numbering to 2-3 to three at the most, in terms of group dynamics. There are a few possible theories that could account for this. The simplest is that the Viperlings and Spinelings are of different sexes, and will seasonally meet in the hydrothermal wastes to procreate with the other sex until the seasonal currents change and they diverge again. Another one to speak of would possibly be a type of hive structure. Spinelings are odd in many ways, especially compared to other creatures on Europa that would have obvious implied methods of consumption, or could at least be assumed. But like before, the best that I could figure for the standard spineling is at least some form of chemosynthetic symbiosis or algae. Though another small possibility exists that other spinelings are fed by the viperlings, with them assuming some form of collector or farming role. It honestly wouldn't be surprising if the spinelings lived in a near ant-like community, maybe even digging some of the more natural tunnels and caves here on Europa. Though, of course, that is only based on the lone spinelings that many miners tend to come across here on Europa just zipping around lonely in caves, which it could possibly be a scout, but of course that could also just be me wanting it to be true. Other than that, the Viperlings exist as a mystery to me, and anything further can only be answered by observation and continued placation of its habits, though on my account I hope these observations involve far less morbuzine and puncture wounds. I only have so many bandages. Thank you for watching another one of my videos. Halloween is coming up soon, and I will try to have a video prepared for it. Of that being, the husk. Hopefully everything I've learned that's new about the creature rolled into a new format. So please, until next time, have a great and safe rest of your week.